Welcome to the second Blake Misfit devlog. Before we start today's video, I would like to thank you all for the positive feedback I received so far. I'm really grateful that you all seem to like what I'm doing here and I'm super motivated to keep doing these videos. And of course, if you like my devlogs and you haven't already, please consider to subscribe. So today I want to show you what I did in the last two weeks. First of all, I finished the Trinket implementation. And besides that, I took a deep dive into Unity's shader graph. I was able to craft some shaders that I can use on the character sprites. And I was also able to create some really cool scene transitions with Unity's shader graph. So that's quite exciting. Okay, enough of the intro. Let's jump right in and have a look at the trinkets. In the last video, I showed you that the player can already pick up trinkets and equip them onto the player characters, but they didn't do anything except looking good in the menu. I now made a scriptable object as a data container for stat effects, so that I then can create different stat effect prefabs, which I then put into the corresponding prefabs for the trinkets. So now, when the player equips a trinket, the stat change will be applied to the player character stats and vice versa if I unequip a trinket. To have a good overview of the current unit stats, I added some more UI to the upper part of the menu. It does the job, but I'm not super happy with it, because it looks a bit too much. Like an economy simulation or something like that. There is something else that's new, it's the evasion stat. At the moment it does nothing, but I want to add some kind of defensive action during battles, so that the player has something to do when the enemies perform attacks. The evasion stat is supposed to make whatever this action will be more effective or easier to pull off. After I was happy with the trinkets for the moment, I wanted to work on some eye candy. So because I did not have a lot of experience with shaders, I watched some tutorials on Unity Shader Graph. It's a great tool for people who don't know a lot about shader programming, because it allows you to build your own shader via graph. Since it's quite powerful, you can do a lot of cool stuff with it, and I decided to give it a try. My first idea was to build a ghost shader, which I could then add to the ghost pirate enemy. So after I've seen it in another tutorial, I began by just creating a scanline texture, and then used it for the alpha channel of the shader. Then I just had to make it move constantly, and there it is. A hologram. That was maybe a stupid idea, because it does not look like a cool ghost pirate. More like a... more like a hologram from Star Wars. Next try. This time, I thought about a randomly generated noise texture which I would then use for the alpha channel. But again, the result was not convincing. Nevertheless, I did enjoy working with Shader Graph, even if the results were not what I wanted them to be. And then, I had a final idea. First, I would just let the alpha change over time by the value of an absolute sine wave with an offset. After that, I thought about messing with the UVs. There are some nodes like rotate or twirl which will manipulate the texture's UV. I started with a rotation, again following a sine wave. Then I added a twirl node in the hope that the feet of the pirate may stand still while the rest of the body is wobbling around. And there we go. It's not perfect, and I still have to find the correct values to make it look really good, but for the moment I'm quite happy with it. After I was happy with the ghost shader, I had another idea. I once saw a video about Unity 2D shaders, which would make it possible to have these cool transitions like in Pokemon when an encounter starts. The idea is actually quite simple. All you need is a texture with a gradient, which will then cut off the alpha channel of another texture over time. So, now that I know the basics of shader graph, I thought I should be able to pull this off. I created a first transition texture, just some triangles from different directions, and then started to build the actual shader. It took me some time to figure out how to use the comparison node, but besides that it was actually quite simple. I built a little helper script which would change the cutoff value over time and then it was ready to go. And it works. Almost. There was one problem I did not take into account. If I want the animation to run at the same speed over the entire transition, I absolutely need the gradient to be spread out 100% evenly. So. I started to build some simpler transition textures with a sprite and after some fiddling around I had it working. 
If you want to know exactly how I built the shader in detail and how I created an evenly distributed gradient texture, you might want to subscribe to my channel because I'm planning to do a video tutorial on this topic. So, after everything was working and the transition effect looked quite good, I started to make some variations of the first transition. Here I just doubled the amount of columns and mirrored one side of the texture and bam! Now the effect starts from two sides. That's great. And then here, look at this fancy checkerboard-like transition. I really love the shader a lot because now it's so simple to create so many different transitions just by drawing some different gradient textures in Acebrite. Nice! So that's already it for today's devlog. I hope you enjoyed what I was able to show you. And if you don't want to miss out on future episodes of this devlog or want to see the tutorial I'm planning to do, please consider to subscribe, join the Discord server or follow me on Twitter or Instagram. You will find all the links in the description. So, that's enough from me and thank you for watching.